Hello and welcome to June 2nd, 2022. I'm Kurt and this is my daily Good Life Meditation video. Something I do each and every morning <clears throat> just after waking up to prepare myself for the day by looking at my life objectives, touching in a way each one, one by one, uh, to see if they're sound, to make sure I understand them, and to keep them uh, right there in my head. To appear, they just they just pop into existence throughout the day as I need them. If I if I remember them, if I if I keep them in mind, if I do this exercise <clears throat> every day, and I never miss a day. Uh, I've been doing this since uh, 2018, about December 2018, when I published my book, Going Alone, was when I started this. Back then, uh, uh, I only had five <laughs> five uh, um, <clears throat> principles. <clears throat> now I have 30 principles and uh, seven objectives to, towards which those principles aim. The objectives are the things that I'm seeking to achieve, not in terms of particular goals, but, but con consequences of being, the consequences of life, or, you know, the results of good living. And the 30 principles get me there. In addition, I reflect on the last 24 hours, <clears throat> to see how I did, including my sleep time. And I also pull out uh, incidents and examples in the last 24 hours where I may have been, uh, had, may, may have had an opportunity to use my principles for to, to do better, to live well, or maybe where I failed to do so. Either, either of those are instructive. And then I plan for the coming day. So first, last night and yesterday, it's 5, 5.17 right now. I feel extraordinarily um, rested. I feel very, very good. I feel, I feel 58 in the best sense of the word. You know, I'm only recently turned 58, newly minted 58. Um... You know, my gosh, 28, 28 felt like, felt like being uh, um, a sailor on a, you know, below decks on a battleship, you know, with the lights blaring, the sounds of the ship doing its thing, <clears throat> the battle outside, I remember <clears throat> Sam Merriman used to describe to me, my, my old employer, the, my benefactor, the man that uh, gave me my home on Moonstone Beach. He manned um, an anti-aircraft gun on, a, I think it was a battleship in World War II in the Pacific. And he would describe what that was like to be under, the, under Japanese airplane attack. And that's how it feels. That's how it felt when I was 28. The sounds of them, just that's what it was like to be 28. Life was a, 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 a battlefield <clears throat> playing out, and I remember running around with my life vest on all the time, just you know, ready to go over the side. Well, you know, going over the side in that case just simply meant, you know, you know, ready for whatever emergency would would come up. You know. I had no, I had no idea that was the situation. Now, of course, I'm being, I'm being, uh, um, ex, you know, hi, this is hyperbole, you know, describing my twenties as, as a battlefield. But that's what I felt like, <clears throat> because I was mentally unprepared and unequipped, poorly equipped for the the challenge of life around me. 38 was a great distraction, you know, career and young family. 48 was a fatiguing, fatiguing distraction. 58 is more like a, um, a mellow cruise on the sea. Yeah, there's squalls. Yeah, there's some wind some days and it's cold and I need to put on a jacket. But for the most part, it's smooth sailing. The body is only starting to put up small um, revolts. You know, I've, I've 
I've got little, I won't, I won't give you the particulars, but I've got partic- little, little tiny little ailments, you know, that are, that are troubling me here and there, you know. The, the, my little my little sailboat's a little patchy, you know, pops a little leak one here and there. It's, you know, something needs to be fixed. But it's a good time of life. These late 50s are good. And I, and I think that, well, well, I mean, there's some obvious reasons why, right? I mean, you know, excuse me. One, you know, my kid's grown, you know. Raising kids is hard. And my kid has grown. She's turned out to be a fine young woman. Um, I'm really proud of her. She's doing really well. She got offered a job. She does. She works uh, nights teaching uh, um, <clears throat> Japanese kids English in a, for a company that does this via video games. So she had, leads a team of, of young Japanese kids on adventures and video games. And they speak English the whole time, but, you know, because she speaks Japanese too, she can um, talk to them in Japanese and explain things. She's, so she's up late at night because she has to match the Japan time. And doing that, I can sometimes wake up in the middle of the night and hear her down down in her... her she's, she's commandeered our guest room as her little office. Excuse me. <clears throat> they offered her a job. Um, she had met with the uh, president of the company and, and his staff, or some staff, HR, of the people, this week, and they offered her a job running their uh, HR. I mean, not HR, she, um, uh, uh, pub- social media. This is the second job where she'll be doing that. The first job she was she was doing, this was an internship she had last year. She was doing social media, uh, creating social media posts for a, um, a Japanese um, export company, bringing stuff from exporting from the United... Okay, so it would be import, importing from the United States into Japan. And she would do their social media posts. Um, and now she's going to be in charge of the social media for this language school, which has like over 500 students. It's a big school. And on that, on top of her full-time teaching, I mean, a full-time uh, sch- uh, st- uh, schedule in school, and she's doing great in her grades. She had her finals last week. She got straight A's. She's um, she, uh, she's just kicking butt. And she's looking on, she's getting her, um, you know, she's looking on, she told me she the other day she was looking on Indeed at jobs, you know, preparing for graduation, you know, trying to look at the job offerings that are out there and begin to tune her, her resume and her get even getting certifications on LinkedIn, so that she'll have a, a be able to present a good face to the world, as a, as a, as a young adult in the marketplace. Anyway, I totally just my pride dad moment. That's part of the reason why my life's a little easier, right? I mean, you know, you know, my, you, you kids are kind of like that's a terrible analogy. Wind up, and they're off. They they go, and she's off and going. So that's a lot easier, but mostly. You know, and also the huge one, of course, is that, you know, I did that. You know, I wrote Going Alone. I had experience Going Alone. And I wrote Going Alone, and, and I even wrote a couple of books around it, right? You know, which are kind of like the warm-up and the buffer. Well, anyway, the point is, life is, at this point, you know, the ambitions of life, even the ambitions I didn't know I needed to do, like Going Alone, writing that, are done, you know, and I can see the, I can see the end, I can see her, I can see retirement on the horizon, and, uh, you know, a decade or two of, uh, of peace to come, so yeah, 58, not so bad, you know, I know the horror show is, is out there, right, I know that, that, uh, that, you know, there, there is no karma, there isn't, there, <laughs> happy, end, happy endings are made, not lived, uh, why is that? That sounds canned. I just said that, but I don't know. I don't, I don't even know what the hell that meant. Happy endings are. I guess they are made. You construct the um, constructing, the days of our lives. Like today, I'm constructing today. I'll, part of what I'll do today is I'll plan for the work day. I will construct it in such a way that it will be a good day, like yesterday. I constructed. I had something really hard I needed to do, and I and I and I construct. I pl- I got. I didn't tell you guys this in the video when I did the video, but this is something I did afterwards. 
I knew I needed to do that thing. So the first thing I did when I started the workday was I sent an email to the, the person in charge of that and said, that's getting done today. So I set myself a bar right? and said, I'm going to do that thing today. I'm going to knock it out. Um, and, I, and I did. And it wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be. And it feels good to have it done. All that by way of saying it's good to be 58. <laughs> I don't know if it'll be good to be 59. We'll, we'll have to see. Okay. I slept good. I guess I guess that's telling, right? That's, that's telling. I did get up briefly, just briefly, moments up and moments up, and then back to sleep. I guess that's really t- it. Really is work that's keeping me up, because I knocked out that hard thing, and um, I, I don't have any really challenges right now at work, and I got a three day weekend coming up. Who wouldn't sleep well? So good. If I don't sound too self congratulatory. But I guess that's what this video is about, right? It's about it's about finding what works and what doesn't, <clears throat> personally, and uh, doing more of the former and uh, avoid of avoiding things that resulted in the latter. Was it challenged with anything in particular yesterday? I had that one thing that I told you. Just told you how I handled that. That worked well. Nothing really challenged me otherwise. Oh, I missed an important meeting. I didn't even miss it. I showed up, well, I missed it. I showed up five minutes later. I've got this clock above my computer here. <laughs> I bought this at Ikea. And it runs slow. And it collects, I mean, it runs really slow. Maybe it's the batteries. Maybe I changed the battery. It runs like like a minute, a minute every two days. And it had accumulated, and I noticed it, but I had accumulated it. And I rely on it. I put it right there so I could see it. And I had to, cu- and I do have pop-ups that show up for my calendar, and I don't know why I missed it, but it had accumulated five minutes of lag, and I had an important meeting at three o'clock. I didn't realize it was three. O- I thought it, <laughs> I thought it was when I thought it was three o'clock by this clock. It was three o five. Um, I popped into the meeting just in time for the part that I needed to be a part of to be done. Damn it! Damn it! And it was an important one. I mean, I, I'm still shadowing, so it wasn't expected to me to say anything. But, you know, it's not good form to not be there for a meeting that you will eventually need to <clears throat> be responsible for. I apologize to the uh, person, the lead, probably too many times. That was something I had a realization. I know that I apologize too much in America, more than is necessary. You know, I apologize like a, I apologize like a Japanese, you know. <laughs> That's an interesting one. Uh, I, won't, I, I just let that stay in my head, you know. But I've decided I'm gonna I'm gonna keep that trait. So what? I even had someone yesterday write to me uh, and said, "No need to apologize," and, and I've been aware of this for months. I've toned it down a little bit. But I'm I, I'm actually gonna I'm gonna actually embrace it. I know it's a, I know it's a sign of weakness. I mean, it's it can be perceived as a sign of not weakness, but of subordination, right? Of, of, and I don't mind subordination because the people that I'm typically apologizing to are my superiors to whom I have failed to do a, a good or satisfactory job. Um, I don't mind, and 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 I, frankly, am fine with that. I like that character. It's one of the character traits of the Japanese that I like. You know, gross and profuse apologizing. (laughs) I respect the humility. I respect the 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 acceptance and observation and communication of uh, an error performed or or a mm, less than satisfactory job executed. So I'm going to keep it. And I don't mind if people think I'm weak. I think it's a good character trait. Maybe it'll suit me better when I get back to Japan. All right, well, let's see. Let's do the good life. Seven objectives and 30 principles. These are as follows. Number one, 
The first objective is to be always ready to die. To have my life in a settled state in terms of my affairs and my relationships and my life's work. Number two is to make good and effective use of my time. To uh, eke out a good day and a good night every 24 hours. I was toying that this morning with the idea of naming the days. You know, I write, I do that before I do this video, I write a paragraph in my, in my journal every day. It's the very first thing I do. I'm still in my sleeping clothes and I just, I literally traipse right out of bed, sit at my desk over there, turn on the light on the, above the desk. The whole house is dark otherwise, just my little light and my the journal is always open. Grab my little pen, start writing. I don't even know what I'm going to say when I start writing. I just start writing. And I always begin with the day, you know, it's, it's, it's June 2nd, 2022, and then I put in parentheses, it's a Thursday. I was thinking, you know, kind of like Alice in Wonderland, you know, didn't they call it name, didn't they name, wasn't the Mad Hatter that, that described each day as having a name? Wouldn't that be something to give character and person, character and distinction to each day? I do that kind of now per week because I use my, oh, I do get a mark, I do get a circle for yesterday. Speaking of which, that's how I get the, the distinction for the week. By every day, um, uh, reading 10 pages, writing a journal entry and making a video, I get a circle. And that leads me towards, um, that leads me towards, uh, well, I used to give myself a colored dot on my memento mori death calendar. But I, the colors don't work, so I just give myself a black dot. So I'm just going to do it for the hell of it. Like, no, 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 no memorial of it. Anyway, what if, wouldn't that be funny to give each day a name? Hmm, what if you should give the name in hindsight? Hmm, that's a way to do it. Because each of the journal entries is a paragraph. It has its title. I could give the, I could, I could name, I could retroactively name the day. What would I call yesterday? Hmm. Maybe focus on <clears throat> the thing that I that that that, that, that challenged me most, the, the opportunity that that came forward. I think about it. Like maybe the 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 five minute late day. I like that. Five minute late day. It doesn't have to be a a proper name. It can be a phrasal name. <clears throat> hmm. Well, anyway, good and effective use of time. That's the second objective. Number three is the development and maintenance <clears throat> of good and effect good and uh, sound life principles. That's these seventy objective seven objectives and thirty principles. So I have to maintain them, and I do that every day by categorically enumerating them and discussing them and holding them like I'm doing right now. Next is to cultivate good emotional reactions, just to react well to whatever comes, not fly off the handle, not be too too much of anything, just right down the middle. I was reading yesterday in the the you know, life of Samuel Johnson, Boswell's description of Johnson's even temper and, and the cadence of his speech, the measured tones, the careful use of vocabulary that he used in whenever he was speaking, which had a tendency to just to just capture the audience, whatever wherever he was. And how that Dr. Johnson had uh, cultivated that by, from an early age by taking on every subject of discussion with grave severity, so that it became, uh, you know, this this careful treatment of topics became <clears throat> his forte. Interesting how he did that. That's what I mean by good emotional reactions. Also, is and the good and and and. Well, I have other I have principles called one called <clears throat> um, well, another objective called uh, one thing slowly, just doing one thing at a time and slowly. I've got something in my throat. I guess when you couple those together, it yields that type of that type of approach that 
of Johnson had, excuse me. <clears throat> Need to remember to keep a bottle of water right here. <clears throat> okay, good emotional reactions. And then next is um, <clears throat> the performance of good actions. <clears throat> <clears throat> excuse me, just doing the good things throughout the day. And then the recognition of true limits and true opportunities. Just seeing where the, the boundaries are of what's possible and what's not. And then uh, to do one thing slowly, as I said before. Deliberately and carefully. It's interesting how something can throw you off, right? Getting a little frog in my throat. <coughs> Puts me off. Okay, now my 30 uh, principles. What would Dr. Johnson do in that case? <coughs> Pretty sure in a case like this, he'd do, he'd do exactly this. Just a second. I expected in the instance of getting something in his throat <laughs> while he's talking, Dr. Johnson will politely excuse himself and step over and get his bottle of delicious Japanese oya ocha, which he was a tea drinker, <laughs> although I don't think it was oya ocha necessarily. <laughs> so, uh, I, okay, I'm back on track. Okay, so one, one thing slowly. It's not the multitask. Okay, next is the, my 30 principles. Excuse me. Oh, so, so ungraceful. <laughs> principle number one is the principle of war. To always be fighting against what I think is true. Goodness. Two is the principle of reason and the sub-principles of honesty, objectivity, and doubt, which are the approach that I want to take to life, being honest with myself and others, objective in my evaluation of things, and I fear skeptic as I pursue the uh, aforementioned war. Three, the uh, homunculus, the reminder that uh, the soul seems to be just a, uh, um, something we made up, the idea of a soul. There's no reason to think that there's anything in this that's going to survive our death. I'm going down with the ship. And I expect you are too. And that has consequences. It's important. It's, a, it's an important distinction to make. Next is um, the anchor hold, the idea that the, uh, um, I always do this, I always kind of take the homunculus and I trespass on the anchor hold. The anchor hold suggests that the homunculus is trapped within our head and um, can't get out, <clears throat> thus will uh, go die with me, us. So uh, those two principles really go together, the one and the same. They're, they're not one and the same, but they, they, they need each other, right? The homunculus is, our consciousness without a soul and the anchor hold is the being fact of it being trapped in our skulls and a, an artifact of our biochemistry next comes the home of good and evil right and wrong do not pervade the universe they simply exist as opinions within our heads subjective at that then uh, purpose my three purpi are one to be a good husband and father create a good home and a nurturing environment and support for our daughter in particular. Two, to be a virtuous human being, working to pursue the well-being of others, particularly thinking creatures. And three, to uh, share the uh, story and message in my book, Going Alone, all about um, my experience of encountering the universe without God and what I did with that how I worked to make a good life in spite of the fact that it seems that we're alone, mortal, and doomed to, obli doomed to oblivion. <laughs> doomed to, that's a title, doomed to oblivion. Okay, next is the atomic principle. Everything is made of bits and pieces, flowing and changing and forever transforming. And then the principle of nature. Everything and everyone has some particular nature, and it's good to recognize that, what the, how that is, so that you can... So that we can live in a better accord with how reality really is. And then the pirate ride, 
the suggestion that free will it doesn't really exist. It's, it's an illusion. Um, we, if we have any say at all about our, our lives, it's uh, incidental. The universe around us is, is pushing and prodding us, you know, dr vacuum driving, you know, dr dragging us in every direction. And uh, the result is that we uh, make decisions which are the consequences of the uh, forces around us. No, no will seemingly needed. We are consequence engines of a sort. I can't prove this. So I, I, this is the weakest of my, of my, of weakest of my principles. I, I literally hold it on faith because I can't, I can't rewind the universe and go back and see myself make another decision a different way. But I suspect that uh, with all things being the same, I would always make exactly the same decision that I would. All the while being able to make decisions, but it's, it's a tricky thing. I can make any decision that I want, but the decision that I make ultimately is the only decision that could have been made in that moment, that I could have made in that moment. It's a tough one, but I think it's true. Mm -hmm. and there's grave consequences to that, right? Put that in your theology and smoke it. Mm -hmm. Next is um, maturity and the sub-principles of wisdom and fortitude. And then the social principle. We're social creatures. We need each other. It's good to come back. Going alone is, going alone is towards the uh, adventure and experience. Coming back is the, the result of what we didn't find. Then, um, the public speaking. A reminder to be very careful about my communications. To use few words and carefully chosen words and deliberate words. To cultivate a, a great vocabulary, but to use that very vocabulary sparingly. A good vocabulary is best used uh, for reading, to, to make good reading flow. I mean, it's good to have it for speaking, too, but <clears throat> it's hard not to come across as pretentious or as an ass if you, if you, if you use uh, good words in common speech. So I like to use words that are comfortable, that are appropriate. Maybe, maybe to push the envelope a little bit, a little bit sometimes. Why not have some fun? But, but not in such a way that people are wondering more about what does that word mean than the, the message I was trying to convey. That doesn't do any good. Also, the, another part of the public speaking is to remember not to gossip about people. That'll come up again in sin, in sin and damnation. Next comes the temperance, a reminder to be careful in my consumption, to consume less work and play and less food and less drink, and to to waste time less, to just uh, be temperate in all things. And then the horror show. Oh, and there's sub the three sub-principles of temperance. Suffering, simplicity, and apathy. We su that's because we suffer when we tell ourselves no. And a temperate life is a simple life. And apathy is a, a terrific tool to use to recognize what is outside of our control. Like, it would it'd be inappropriate for me to use apathy about the fact that the clock the slow clock making me late to a meeting, that was within my control. I saw that it was running slow, and I just decided to not take action prior to fix the clock. And as a result, I, I, I was late. <clears throat> I, I deserve any, any criticism or self-censure uh, on that account. It's not outside of my control. If, however, I was relying on Big Ben, living in London maybe, and Big Ben was five minutes late, and that was the result of was late. Oh, I can't do much about the keeping time on that great clock. I could apply a little apathy there. Let myself off the hook just a bit. Okay, next comes the horror show. Reminder that um, this world we live in is just a terrifying horror, horrible place. <laughs> There's just awful things happening to everybody, you know. Stage four cancer in kids and you know, horrible flesh eat, flesh eating bacteria and and uh, wars and famine and bombs and and uh, you know typhoons. Just the list goes on. It's a horror show. And I wanna remember that. And I also want to keep in mind that uh, though I'm very fortunate right now, the horror is coming for me. It may be a, a brief visit for tea. You know 
or it might be a lingering stay. It, horror may move into my home, may move into my, my body right here. It's, it's the way the world is. It's not our fault either. It's just a messy place. I mean, it is our fault if we choose. I mean, assuming, assuming free will isn't free. I mean, if, if we think free will is free, it is our fault if we choose to do things like, like it's my fault if I choose to eat bacon, knowing about the slaughterhouses of hogs. Yeah, I mean, I'm perpetuating the horror show. Ah, that's a heavy one. That and t things like that. It's easy to go down that road and wind up as a as a naked, nearly naked monk, like this guy. You know, sitting under a, a, in the shade of a tree. You know, glaring at the universe in meditative, in the attempt of meditative peace, hurting no one. You know, consuming little and uh, wrapped in contemplation or emptiness, better yet. That's his, his, his angle. There's something to that, especially in light of the horror show. But at the same time, that route doesn't, doesn't cure cancer. But that route doesn't attempt to either. Damn, that's a heavy. Th that's a heavy round of thinking to go down there, right? Would it be better to, to in, in, engage in the world and c contribute to the horror show, in an effort to alleviate the horror show, or to just stand aside and try to uh, harm less, while letting letting the days tick by? I don't know. I'm, I think I'm leaning more towards the former. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Mm, interesting. Well, well, yeah. I mean, clearly, because we got our kids to think about, right? This this route is a dead end. It's all about the kids, right? I mean, sure, we need guys like that as examples, as to to show us avenues and as signposts, models, in, in a way. But we also need people who are willing to. Uh, like my daughter, you know, gearing up, and maybe you know another kid, maybe your kids too, gearing up and 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 ramping up to join the fray and take on the fight to be a part of to be a part of the great you know battle, uphill battle against entropy, against a horror show, maybe having a ham sandwich on the way. Maybe having a ham sandwich on the way to the lab to cure cancer. Okay, it's not an absolute one or the other. It's a little of each, right? I'm going to contribute to the horror show in my, in my effort to <laughs> make the world a better place. Yeah, that's how messy it is. Anyway, how did I get way off on that? Next comes uh, that which must be born. It's the next principle. What we have to bear is the fact of the horror show and the, the responsibilities that we've onboarded in life. Be very careful to say I do. Saying I do means you gotta do. And when you have a kid, you gotta give, they're, they're your, there's half your life gone away, right? Depending on how old you are. You know, it's devoted to that at least 20 plus years. These are the things we have to bear. No two ways around it. Not if you want to live a virtuous life. I'm looking at me when I say that. Not if you, Kurt, want to live a virtuous life. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I've been doing that for the last 20, 20 years, trying to be a good man, raise a kid, and have a good, good husband and good citizen and brother and son. I've been trying. I haven't always succeeded. Uh, again, a little of each, right? Okay, oh, wow. i gotta get, I got to get back on track. It's a working day. I got to get this over with. Okay, so that was the uh, that which must be born. The next is um, uh, the feast feast of Ophel, which is what we do when we get upset and throw that upset out into the world, and consume the upset of others. Then um, 
the two that principles that go to together, distraction and agency and the great indifference. Agency and agency is us. We are agents. Any any sentient creature. The great indifference is the universe sans agency, which is what most of the universe appears to be. That's what going alone is all about, encountering that and seeing that. Most of us don't want to see that. It's not a very nice thing to realize that you're on your own. We are on our own. At least we got each other. That's the key. But So distraction is what we do to keep that away. We distract ourselves with our jobs and our families and our hobbies and our sports and our gods. So that we can we can tell the un ourselves that the universe is rich and full and purposeful and there's gonna we'll live forever, <laughs> all the while denying the great indifference. And the purpose of my book is <clears throat> going alone is to say, go out and experience that, face down the great indifference, and then reconcile that adult challenge: what to do with a universe without God? How do we make a good, good, meaningful? And pur purposeful life, uh, in spite of in spite of the fact that we're alone, in spite of the fact that we're finite, in spite of the fact of the horror show, <clears throat> it is possible. And that's what this good life creed is all about. And just how to do that, how to make a good life um, without God. It's it's hard. It's hard work. You know, there's no one to turn to. There's no, there's no, I don't, you know, like, there's no Bible to, 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 to go, to go to. I can't pray to anybody. You know, faith, faith doesn't get me anywhere. Um, except with, except with the pirate ride. <laughs> it gets me where I want to get, where I want to be. I have to do the hard work. I have to show my math, right? Ah, it's exhausting. But it gets easier with routine repetition. Doing it every day makes it part and parcel of our living. I can tell you that from experience. Okay, so um, after that, uh, whatever, where was I? Oh yeah, the distraction thing. Next comes the best seat in the house. I'm going to go a little quickly now. The best seat in the house, <clears throat> not this seat necessarily, but the idea is that wherever I am, whoever, whatever I'm doing and whoever I am, <laughs> whatever character I am that I'm going to be okay with that. Even if I'm having a bad day, I'm going to try to be okay with that. Not really. I'm going to work to make it better, but it's a difficult balance between accepting the way things are while striving subtly to make things better. It's like like nudging things a little bit, you know, keeping a keeping a stoic and sto stoic face, staying in stoic face. Well, the internal war rages on. You know, okay, I'm just going to sit in the sunshine. <laughs> I guess that's uh, that's part of adulting in some ways, right? We do it really well at work. <clears throat> Next is uh, uh, the path of wildness, which is a way to move forward, to break out of a current par life paradigm and enter a new life paradigm. You have to collect the facts, think about them, make a decision, and go move on, even knowing that uh, you may be uh, maybe a bad decision in the end. Lucky you, it's usually the bad decisions that have the best results in the end. Fancy that. Ah, lucky you, you failed. Mm. No, don't get me wrong, I don't want any more failure. I failed enough. So I, I think I've had enough of that. But um, that's the key thing, I failed enough. <laughs> I failed enough to, uh, to have all the superstructure and extraneous pieces broken off of me, I think. Hopefully, I'm sure I'm sure there's still more on there. If I could live to be 150, I'm sure I would look back at one. I'll, I'll look back in five years and I'll go, who the hell was that man at 58? That vain, conceited, <clears throat> you know, worrisome, troubled, anxious, sleepless man at 58 who thought 58 was good. He had no idea. So, 63 would, what 63 would be like, except for the horror show, which, what's that on the horizon? Ah, oh, shit, it's almost here. Damn horror. Okay, so after the uh, path, <laughs> that was, I kind of got caught off on the track there. The path of wildness, you know, is, that's not right. Yeah, the path of wildness, it's easy to find. It's the course of a stream, beasts, <laughs> The path of wildness is easy to find. Um, it's a beast track through the woods, a course of a stream, 
<laughs> I can't say it. It's in the book. It's a, it's a short little set of uh, sentences in the book. One more try. The path of wildness, it's easy to find. Leaves blown. No, it's the course of a stream. One more time. The path of wildness, it's easy to find. Leaves blown in the wind. One more time. The path of wildness, it's easy to find. The course of a stream, leaves blown in the wind. A beast tracked through the brush and the course of our first, and the direction of our first inclination. I just can't get that right, but I'll settle with that. Okay, after that, after the path of wildness comes the risk of avoiding risk, the surface level risks in life, and the deep risk. The surface stuff is education, career, family, home, and security, and the deep stuff is finding yourself, taking the time in, some time in life to, to, um, to seek after what is, the, what is our nature and what is our interest, and, and, and who, who the hell are we? I mean, it's not a vain question. Um, if you don't do that young in particular, um, you miss out, and then you wind up being some canned, you know, um, copycat of of what whatever whatever identity we were offered and fed in in our young adulthood. You don't have to be that. You can be yourself, but you have to make the effort to do that, and you have to do it young. It's tricky to do both to do the finding and the the adulting, so to speak. I would say though that the, the finding piece is the harder one. There's more. There's more adult courage in in uh, in making making the effort to, to to if not discover who you are because maybe you don't exist yet to create who you are. There's more adult challenge and effort in doing that. And in this stuff, even though it may seem less mature. Okay, Anna, here we go. So that's that. Uh, the the risk of avoiding risk. Oh, no, this, the sin and damnation. There are seven sins in my worldview related to believing things that are untrue, being untrue, and gossiping. These are falsity, credulity, faith, superstition, dogma, authority, and gossip. I don't try to do any of those things. I'm not, as, they, as they say, as, as the kids say these days, I'm not trying to do any of those things. <laughs> I'm trying... I'm trying to be honest, be honest in what I say, be honest in what I, be, be honest with myself about the v veracity of what I believe and the, the truth claims that I maintain and then to not, heaven forbid, gossip about other people. Because the damnation is that if you do any of those things, you end up a, a damn liar, a damn fool, or a damn gossip. I don't want to be a damned anything. Uh, next is a complete oblivion. If there is no soul, there is no God, there is no afterlife, then when we're dead, we're gone forever. That means that um, we're not going to see our loved ones again. And if we've left them on poor terms, those poor terms will remain forever. Not that it matters, not like, oh, no. But, uh, so I, but I would rather address those things now. So I reach out to the people that I love, try to reconcile their differences, and I work to... Um, um, Pursue justice in, in the best ways that I can, legally, of course. That's sin and damnation. That's a complete oblivion. Next is the great life adventure. That thing that you can do at an early age that helps you to create your character and your identity. And it's, it's not maybe it's less about finding you, but making you. Better do it. You better do it young. I mean, if you feel so inclined. Some of us don't aren't so inclined. So lucky you, I guess. And then uh, the great life. And the next is season of philosophy, a time of life. If you have a good life, if you have a good great life adventure, especially if it's early, and you live successive chapters of life, it's not just one chapter in in a book. <laughs> you might uh, find well, maybe there's two, something to that too. You might find words start to come later in life that you might want to get down. That's when it's time to buy a blank journal and a pen and start to record those things. And when the words come, write them down because they go, they, they're gone like that. They're like. The temporary visitors and they don't come back. Next is the bullseye aim, a reminder to shoot, to be shoot for the target, but we usually miss. Sometimes we miss the target altogether. Sometimes we let go of the knife as we whoop, whoop, grab. That's uh, that's the nature of things. I, I use that all the time at work because I usually it's really hard to get things square. I just remind myself, ah, bullseye aim, and then it just goes away. Next is uphill climb, 
Life is just keep trudging up, right? Don't stop climbing, Kurt. If I'm not worn out at the end of the day, if I, because I go to bed about eight thirty, if I'm not just beat tired, my my body aches. I walk about five miles a day. Literally, my 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 bones, will, my body, my I should be sore, bruised, and exhausted every day. If I'm not, then I'm not climbing the hill. I'm not climbing the mountain. I'm instead I've took a shovel and started to dug a hobbit hole in the side. None of that for me. Keep climbing, Kurt. Turn around once in a while. Look at the view. Keep the pack. Keep the pack uh, with just a, the few essentials in there. Not too much. And then comes um, arena and utility. Life is this arena for the execution of our lives, using principles and towards the objectives that we've set. And I, by keeping these, by reminding myself of these each and every day for a long time, like thirty to forty-five, fifty minutes. I'm almost fifty-six minutes now. Um, it really does. It just puts these things right in my head. They're like they're like there. These principles. I don't even need to think about them anymore. They just I mean, suddenly a challenger comes in. I'm a bullseye aim or apathy. You know, okay, temperance. Hold off. It's it's like it's like you know, it's like being doing karate every day, to the point that you you know your your instincts are just there. But for principles and objectives, it's a fascinating thing. It's like mental karate. <laughs> I like I like I like that. I like I'm gonna keep that one. I I feel 58. I feel pretty. I feel 58. Okay, almost done, Kurt. Just focus, Kurt. Two more. Uh, next is um, nothing is enough. A reminder, like temperance, to do less, but it's a push to even less. Right? Temperance says, don't go over the top. Don't have an, don't have too many cookies, or drink too much beer, or work too much, or or play too much, or spend too much, or whatever. Nothing is enough says. And pull it down. Empty the backpack. Leave the backpack at the side of the road. You know. Well, there's there's a freedom and a peace, and a comfort, in unburdening ourselves. Of not, of not just excess, but of what seemed to be necessity. Getting by like this guy. There's something to that. There's something to his example. Last one, um, the principle of fun, a reminder to, to enjoy my life in the here and now, as fraught as it is with messiness, and also to turn my attention forward and enjoy the hope of things to come, and then sometimes to pull my focus back and remember the peace, the happiness, the joy, the challenge of the past. After all, if we're not going to have fun, why bother? Even with the horror show knocking at the door. Oh, it may be here now. Oh, don't jinx myself. Mm, I don't believe in that stuff. It's coming out anyway. It doesn't matter. I no need to lock the door. It's going to get in. So I'm going to have a good day anyway. I'm going to enjoy my day today. I'm going to enjoy talking to my co-workers. I'll enjoy talking with my wife and walking with her over lunch with the dogs. I'll enjoy when Google Photos throws up an old photo from 16 years ago. I'll enjoy the memory, the cascade of remembrance that comes with that. And then when the day closes and my wife and my daughter and I have our, our humble dinner together and delicious dinner. Yumiko makes the best meals. Humble in so far as it's, it's, it's food that satisfies at a deep level. It's not superfluous. And then when uh, eight thirty comes, even though the sun hasn't done gone down, I'll climb back into bed with, take my little dogs with me, and get them bedded into their little places, and I'll go to sleep. And I'll sleep a deep sleep through most of the night, dreamless it seems. I may wake once in a while through the night, and early in the morning. That's okay too. Less and less. It's, it's good to be 58 after all, if I didn't tell you already. It's good to uh, get older and to get past the rough spots. And the rough spots are what made this part good. If it wasn't for those rough spots, <clears throat> I wouldn't have anything to compare this piece with. Hmm. 
I guess that's the purpose. The purpose of moving on. And then the purpose of being uh, being there for my family and to be a, uh, a maybe even a, a model in a way for my child to show her what the challenges come up in her life, what the consequence may be, because she knows all the challenges we faced. And maybe one day she'll enjoy being 58 as well. Oh, I certainly hope so. Anyway, speaking of 50, it's 50 minutes in. Uh, so I'm going to stop now. I'm planning for today, just real quick. I plan to... Uh, uh, do my I'll get up right now I'll go over I'll do I'll read the Bible I think I, I'm, 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 keep, I'm, I'm in Isaiah still but I think I'm in Isaiah 62 I keep getting the chapters mixed up but I mean I leave the marker right there so I know exactly where I am so I'll read the I'll read, I'll read uh, Isaiah 62 study Isaiah 62 I don't just read it I think about it and then I'll um, go downstairs I'm running late today I'll feed the dogs feed myself change into my work clothes and get started on a day that maybe tomorrow I'll name this day. I wonder what I'll call it. Maybe I'll call it I Feel 58 Day. I could borrow from these the title because I give every one of these videos a title. I could call that day the title of this video because this day, video is kind of a summary in a way. Or maybe I should retroactively put the title for, for, for this video to apply to the previous day. Oh, we'll see. I think I'm onto something there, if I do say so myself. Anyway, have a good day. Be safe, but not too safe. <laughs>